Good morning folks, Ariel over here at Pineth, where today I want to talk just a little bit about um, downsizing. Now this is something, I've been in here now, I'm into my fifth year of living in a tiny house. If you're new here, welcome. Um, there's hundreds of videos about all kinds of things you might have questions about, and my house is on wheels and it's about 170 square feet, unless you count the sleeping loft where you can't stand up, then it's about 220. Anyway, so I have a small space and I've over the years gotten quite a few questions about how to downsize. Do I have advice? What do I do if I have all this stuff? And I was always kind of like, I don't know. I don't know how to tell you to downsize because for me, it was never... Um, it was just not difficult. I've lived in smaller spaces. I've lived in, um, you know, out of a backpack. I can live for a week or two with like 32 pounds on my back. Um, I've lived in vehicles and so on. So I, I did not personally find it difficult. But in the last uh, few months, I've been a lot of places to see a lot of people, um, various trips and um, to see friends and family and so on. And so I've been in a lot of other homes and I realized in the process of doing that that I do actually have some ideas for how you might downsize if that is something you're interested in. Now, what, what mostly led to this realization for me was that there are a lot of really poisonous things in a lot of our houses. Um, and if we got rid of them, we would be healthier and probably have more money and have less stuff to take care of and if you're trying to fit your stuff into a smaller space or just have less to take care of even if you don't want to be in a small space that could be helpful so um i i'm not a doctor i don't pretend to be one but i have learned a lot because of my own personal experience i am much more um sensitive to a lot of chemicals than a lot of people but the more i learn about them the more i learn they're not good for any of us it can just take a while for that um, the obvious effects to build up. It may be much later in your life. It may not be till your children's lives or even your grandchildren's lives if you learn a little bit about epigenetics and how some of those things are passed on through multiple generations. So anyway, if, um, and it just occurred to me as I looked around a lot of the stuff that a lot of people have in a lot of homes that if you get rid of most of the things that are really not that good for us in the first place, it, it would just, your life would automatically be simplified. So uh, there's a kind of a couple big categories here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a series here and you are watching the first one. Since cooking is such a um, big, uh, big area of my life and activity I spend a lot of time doing, I thought I'd cover that first. So I've spent some time recently, like I said, in a bunch of other homes and including cooking in other people's kitchens. And some of these things I kind of thought were, uh, like, oh, everyone knows this um, by now, surely, that this or that thing is really not good for your health. And and I realized as I was in a lot of people's houses, clearly not everyone actually knows this because there's a lot of people still using them. So basically, um, for food that you're going to put in your body, because we do end up pretty much being what we eat, it has a huge effect on how we feel, you want things that are are going to be kind of inert, not get into your food, or um, not if, if it's something from the the object does get into your food, that it's not uh, uh, toxic to you. So, for um, I can really the, if you want the quick version, here's the quick version. Only use wood, glass, or stainless steel in your anything that touches anything you eat. That will that will simplify. What this looks like is I have stainless steel knives. That one's pretty easy. Almost everyone probably has metal knives. Um, with, um, you know, all my utensils. I've got this whole little bucket here. And uh, with the exception of a, a silicon spatula, a couple times silicon can be helpful for when you need something more rubbery. Everything else, as you can see in here, is wood, wood, bamboo, stainless steel, mostly stainless steel, and some wood and bamboo. This thing here is so full. There's one thing I would like to replace still. See this black plastic? And I don't have a good one here to show you because this is the only thing I have that has any black plastic on it. 
Um, obviously the part that actually touches the food is still stainless steel, but uh, mu uh, much of the ki kitchen utensils I see people still using in their houses are the entire thing is made out of this. The, it's got a big fat chunky handle, you know what I'm talking about, um, and a big you know scoop or ladle or scraper or whatever, and it's plastic. And the reason there's the half hour. Um, the reason that a lot of people are using it is because of the cupware they're using, which we're going to get to in just a second. But that black plastic tends to be made from a lot of recycled plastic, and while recycling is awesome and reducing and reusing are probably even better, um, one of the results from that is it tends to get the, the plastics that are being recycled into that black plastic tend to get a lot of heavy metals in them, things like um, mercuries and leads and such, because a lot of them come from electronic parts originally that were melted down. And so they're, they're in, again, I'm not a doctor, look this stuff up for yourself. I highly encourage everyone to do their own research and become more aware of and responsible for their own choices. But it seems like they're tense, especially when heated, which is what often happens when making food, um, there is a lot of leaching of that stuff out of that black plastic. So I just still have this one and I guess I'm okay with it where the handle doesn't actually touch the food, but I prefer to not even have that. Everything else has, you know, a fully stainless steel handle or a fully wooden or bamboo handle, something like that. Um, because I don't want that plastic leaching into my nutritious food as I cook. Um, that leads me quite naturally over here to cookware. Um, again, stainless steel. The, this is an awesome set of pots. I don't have any affiliation with Cuisinart or however they pronounce their name, but I have been using their set of cookware for, I've had these maybe seven years now, and I use their, almost all the pots and pans on a daily basis, and they're awesome. It, this is actually, I've done a ton of reading, like hours and hours of reading reviews and stuff on, on pots and cookware before I have bought this because I wanted something nice in the couple random thrift store pans I had and um, didn't want to spend a fortune. So from everything I could find, this cookware set, and I'll link to it down below, is the highest rated for um, even cooking, not burning, um, all kinds of, of points in its favor as cookware that is under like two or three thousand dollars and this sets about two hundred dollars and it's got a couple saucepans, some are still in my drain rack, um, a couple skillets, several bigger skillets and a bigger pot like this. So, And one of the nice things about this because um, it, uh, stainless steel can burn a little more than nonstick stuff is this is actually a triple core so there is a um, a copper core which conducts heat really evenly and it's sandwiched between two layers of stainless steel. So front stainless steel, back stainless steel, but it has a copper core and in a lot of less expensive ones the, they'll have that but it's like right here right where it touches the heat. This one actually has it on the bottom and part way up the side so it conducts heat very evenly the whole way around the pan. So that's one of the, the cool features about this. But everything that touches food is stainless steel. I also have a handful of cast iron pots this cold egg one I found uh, at a thrift store and I've got a big skillet and other smaller skillets and such. Um, I strongly recommend that nobody cook in nonstick cookware. Um, the, the chemicals that are in Teflon, which is what that stuff is coated with, are, um, we now know, uh, I think some people have known for a long time, but are highly um, incompatible with human health and they're off gassing some even when they're not scratched and over time almost every pan does get scratched and then you're getting even more of that in your food and that can be wreaking havoc on your um, hormones because a lot of those chemicals are hormonal disruptors they mess with your endocrine system all of that um, but back to just making it really simple and again look all that stuff up I find learning about these things fascinating but I highly recommend using it for cooking, especially um, stainless steel or cast iron. Um, baking, I do use a lot of glass. Um, it's okay, baby boy. Um, for baking, I do use a lot of glass. I have so much stuff under here. You know, I've got glass pie plates. 
I do have, you know, glass baking dishes, all of this kind of thing. And there's a lot more in there. I'm just not wanting to unstack the whole cupboard. But glass, again, does not seem to, as best we know, have much that, that comes off of it or out of it and into your food. And it's pretty easy to clean. Then the other cool thing is if I've had people say, well, if you're using that and stuff's not non-stick, um, then isn't it hard to clean? It's not really. What I've actually found, because I've done dishes at a bunch of friends' houses I was at, is that I find the non-stick stuff harder to clean because some stuff does stick a little bit, especially if the pan's not brand new and they don't stay brand new forever. And then you can't actually scrub it with much force or anything because then you will scratch it. The awesome thing about glass or stainless steel is that you just get some hot water and soap. And then I used to have the, the little, um, just like stainless steel look like a kind of like a steel wool thing. And that worked really well. And then somebody recommended that I try one of these which um, one of you guys actually gifted to me, which was awesome. It's like a little piece of chain mail. It's really cool. Folds up and it's just fun to play with to make a great toy. Um, but this works really well too. Again, I just use the same water and dish soap. And this is kind of reusable, I think virtually forever. And you can clean your pan with that. You would not use this on nonstick because it would absolutely scratch it, but since you've already thrown away all of your nonstick, then this works really well and cleaning things is not difficult. And since you've thrown away all of your nonstick stuff or aluminum pans if you have them, because um, aluminum is, is pretty poisonous to human beings as well, um, since you've thrown all that away, you also don't need your plastic uh, utensils because now I can just use my stainless steel whatever and I don't have to worry that it's going to scratch anything on my nonstick pan. So if you actually went through your um, kitchen and got rid of everything that was not stainless steel, glass, or cast iron, you would probably have automatically downsized a lot of your kitchen. Oh and then leftover containers, um, again I don't like to store food in plastic. I do keep a tiny handful of containers that need reuse. They give away food in so I don't care if they don't come back. But I have quite a few of these in varying sizes, these little Pyrex dishes. There is a lid um, that's flexible but that doesn't generally touch the food so I uh, you know I deal with that but um, the, the containers are all glass and I got square ones and round ones and rectangle ones but this is what I use for storing food. Um, so yeah, if you, if you get rid of everything that's not those things, you will probably have downsized your kitchen. You'll probably still have everything you need to be able to cook. Um, this is what I use, and as you know, I cook all the time. And so, oh yeah, I was going to mention, the way I actually figured out when I was first moving in here years ago, um, or before I first designed the place, I wanted to be sure all of my stuff could fit. So I actually went through my house. The, I was renting an apartment, sharing it with a roommate at the time, so it was, had a lot more space in it. And I went through and said, okay, this is my, and I actually stacked it up on our dining room table. This pile here, this is my pots and pans and dishes and glasses and silverware and whatever. This is my kitchen stuff. So these are the things I don't want to live without. It, as I design the house, where am I going to put this physical stack? I think if I can find it, I'll show you the picture. This physical stack of stuff, so I need a cupboard, a shelf, a, you know, some place I can put those things because that's what I want to have. And I, and I did that for the other areas of my life. This is the, you know, this is my stack of clothing. I need this much stuff. It's winter here a lot of the time. It warmed up. It's like 19 above out there today. It was minus 15, minus 17 the last few nights. Um, and that's kind of how I planned even designing the house. Like, okay, so if I had that covered, I could put these here. And if I had this covered, I could put the those th items there and so on. So that is a, um, I guess that's my thoughts on downsizing in the kitchen. And the benefits again are going to be that you're going to have less stuff if that was your goal. Um, it's you're going to be healthier and since most of these things kind of last forever, I mean, a few of these pie plates and stuff, and you can often find like this glassware and stuff at thrift stores if you don't have it already. You don't have to go buy it brand new. I see pie plates and pans like this and stuff in thrift stores all the time for a dollar or two. And, you know, as long as you don't 
break it, you know, drop it on the floor and shatter it, and these are pretty sturdy, um, they, they really do last just about forever. So it, it saves you money in the long run as well, and improves your health. So to me, there is just no downside at all to getting rid of the, the plastics and the Teflons and the aluminum and all of that stuff in your kitchen. Hopefully that gives you some tips and ideas if you are looking to reduce your amount of stuff you want to deal with in life. Thanks for watching folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.